assalamu alaikum uh, good evening to everybody uh, welcome to the last session i was sir uh, you guys Guys, guys or not? So, uh, so if you guys can hear me, then I will start the presentation. Okay, presenting my entire screen now. Yes. So uh, we are now left with uh, Alhamdulillah two uh, assessments. So one is test number one, uh, sorry, test number two, and one is your presentation. So uh, regarding test number two, you guys already know that question number one will be from CNC, and question number two will be from Rapid Prototyping. It will be an open book, open. Uh, open internet assignment you guys are free to search literature and you guys are free to add any references from the literature as well uh, for your test number two now i am going to uh, give you a briefing on your presentation how you guys need to give presentation on the second part of your course which relates to surface engineering <clears throat> So uh, this is the presentation uh, for uh, uh, today, which I will be giving you. Uh, on my left hand side is the presentation and on my right hand side, I have opened one uh, journal paper. I'm not sure if I can hear you guys or not, but if in case uh, you want to communicate, please do write in the messages or on WhatsApp. Uh, I can open my WhatsApp and see what is going on in case, just in case that I cannot hear you guys. <clears throat> So today we are going to look into the presentation part of your presentation. Uh, okay, your presentation is total marks of twenty percent marks of the course. Okay, which is uh, quite handsome amount. So I have given the class details. Okay, and if you go to uh, the Google Classroom, then I have given you guys uh, some guidelines onto the presentation how the presentation is going to be conducted. So the students can hear uh, in the post, in the post on Google Classroom, they can see that we have got uh, rubrics. So here is the file rubrics. So in this rubrics, basically you guys can see uh, how I am going to evaluate you guys, okay? Uh, you are going to be giving me 10 minutes presentation, each person, and these are the rubrics by which I will be carrying out the marking process for your presentation on the presentation day. So here is uh, the rubric. So criteria number one is that I will look into the slide and how you explain process and the coding. Then number two is uh, how the student is able to communicate uh, and give the oral presentation. I, I surmise that you guys are going to be very good in this regard based on the fact that you guys have very good experience then uh, you have to uh, make one slide on coding properties. Uh, then I will look into the slide quality, how you guys have formatted the slides, how the form looks like, how is the arrangement, how is the information written in bullet points. Uh, next, we are going to look into the characterization techniques. Uh, lifelong learning is something which is related to the question and answer session which I will conduct at the end of the presentation. It will be one question or something like that, not much. And the most important thing is, how are you guys going to carry out the time management? You have got 10 minutes, so you will have 10 minutes to answer the questions. Sorry, you have 10 minutes to give the presentation, sorry. So these are the rubrics by which I will be evaluating the student. Okay, so point number one is that how I will be evaluating me. Point number two is 
students are required to use a presentation template with fixed number of slides. So uh, here I have, <coughs> sorry, I have attached a presentation template. You guys can follow the presentation template and uh, give the presentation. In this presentation template, there are a maximum of seven to eight slides that you guys have to fill only. Students are required to select one paper from the list of papers attached below and then present on the slides which are given. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have given you guys nine papers, nine journal papers. Each of you can select one paper as per your own choice. So right now, just you select a paper and inform your friends, inform your peers that I will be presenting this paper. So you have the option to present one paper uh, per person. Uh, please do note that each person should have a separate or each person should have a unique paper. So you guys can choose from the number of papers which are presented. So after you have chosen the uh, paper, then you need to transfer the data into the PowerPoint template. And then once you have transferred the data into the PowerPoint template, then on the presentation day, based on the rubrics, you guys have to present accordingly. So this, this is the, uh, by and large, the thick, thick and thin of what uh, has to happen or what is going to happen for the presentation part. Okay, so uh, now I will show you uh, how to transfer the data from the journal paper into the presentation template. So I hope everything is clear. If there is any question, you can ask in the middle of the uh, today's class. No worries, no issues. <clears throat> Okay, so let's move to presentation final assessment. So we are going to allocate one day of your class. Okay, so tentative for me from my side is 8th or 9th of January 2022, which is either Saturday or Sunday. Okay. However, if you guys are free on any other day, if you want to choose any other day, please do let me know and I will accommodate that day. No worries from my side. It's not fixed. It's up to the students how they plan and how they schedule between themselves. And then later on, they can inform me uh, accordingly. <clears throat> so each student has to present one paper. Discuss with yourself and let me know on WhatsApp group. The group leader can let me know. Uh, what you're going to present are these very five important things. Out of these five important things, you have to present uh, these topics from the paper. Okay. This is something I will come to in the next slide. Okay. So one student is allocated for one paper the seven research papers for each student will be self-selected. So you guys have to select the papers which I have given to you guys yourself, okay? But each student should select one unique paper. So uh, for my class, uh, we've got only four students. So total will be 10 minutes per presentation. So 10 minutes for presentation and five minutes for question and answers. So this will be 15 minutes per student, four times, uh, the student will be equals to one hour for the whole presentation session. So what is included in the template which I have shared with you guys? So in the template, number one thing that you need to do, the first slide is the title slide, which is not uh, counted, okay? But you have to show or you have to write the title slide. Number two is process introduction. So regarding process introduction, uh, you need to see which paper you have selected. In this example, here you can see the title is Enhancing the Tribal Mechanical Properties of Aerospace Aluminium Alloy by Magnotron Sputtering of Thin Flim, cer uh, thin flim Ceramic Coating. So here the process is Magnotron Sputtering. Okay. So here also you can see that the process of coating is Magnotron Sputtering. And uh, Magnotron Sputtering is basically a type of physical vapor deposition. So what you need to do is you need to give introduction on physical vapor deposition. Okay. So here you can see in the process also that uh, magnotron sputtering physical vapor deposition was used to 
uh, carry out the coating process. So we have to give some details uh, introduction. Just Google how, how magnetron sputtering works. Just Google how physical report position works. Put a figure, show some of the key points and describe in the presentation about physical vapor deposition process. Next, we need to give information on the coating information. What is coating information? What is the material? Okay, what is the material of coating? How the coating was deposited? What are what the parameters by which coating was deposited? What is the composition of the coating? Oh, okay, so these are some things that we need to write. So here in the material section, you go and you go to the material section, okay? And you can see that this is round bars of aluminum. So this is basically substrate. And uh, then the samples were ground. Okay, then we have got uh, the composition, chemical composition of the substrate, which is this. Okay, you can include that. Then you can show that the coating is consist of titanium, titanium nitride coating. Okay, chromium, chromium nitride coating. And then we have got titanium, chromium, titanium, chromium nitride coating. So you can write that in this paper, three types of coating were deposited. How they were deposited? They were deposited by using these parameters. So these parameters were uh, used and you can later on put these parameters in your uh, parameters table box or in your coatings information box. Okay. Next, surface characterization. How the surface was characterized? So if you go in the experimental details and you go into uh surface characterization or material characterization okay here you can see that the coating morphology one and elemental this characterization were investigated by this machine scanning electron microscopy okay then atomic force microscopy was used to observe the topographical texture okay you know that surface has got a certain topography so atomic force microscopy was used to check the surface topography and then adhesion strength was uh, measured using uh, this uh, machine okay uh, a diamond rockwell indenter was used to calculate the hardness of the material over the surface hardness was determined using micro hardness experimental method so four or five properties were measured number one is coating morphology using scanning electron microscopy okay number two is uh, uh, the st structure of the coating okay internal structure of the coating was measured using focus ion beam technology okay number three atomic force microscopy was used to observe the topographical texture Number four, adhesion strength was used to, was measured by this instrument. Then uh, the hardness was measured by micro hardness measurement equipment. So the, this is something that you need to write in the surface characterization slide. Next, we move on to the results section. Okay. So results section. So you move on to the results section. Okay. These are the results. So in the result section, here you can see surface roughness, surface friction and wear, hardness and adhesion strength. So here you can see hardness and adhesion strength. So you can use this these pictures, okay, that how the hardness increases or decreases. You can add this information in your slide, okay, something like that. So basically, more or less, you have done already something like this in your uh in your dissertation or in your thesis you already have gone through a uh, reading papers so this is something what you need to do is what you have learned in surface engineering slides is something that you need to see and try to grasp the knowledge from these papers it will be difficult initially however if you go through the paper two or three times then it will be very easy not very difficult and then you can give some results on okay, some so you can give some results and that how the adhesion strength varies. So you can this information here as well later on. Okay. So you have each slide, each result should have one slide. Each result, one slide. Okay. 
So you can have three results for three slides. And then last but not least, the conclusion. So I have made uh, this slide template for you guys, okay, for this paper, okay. So please uh, don't present this paper if I, by mistake, I have added this paper, okay, because I have already made the slide for this paper. So I will go down and now I will show you how the paper looks like when you convert the paper into a slide. Let's move on. So today we are going to be presenting uh, the paper Enhancing Driver Mechanical Properties of Aerospace Alloy. Aerospace Aluminium Alloy 7000 Series 7075-T6 Alloy. And how uh, we enhance the tribomechanical properties uh, by doing the magnetron sputtering process or by doing or carrying out the physical vapor deposition process. Physical vapor deposition process of what? Of some coatings. Which coatings? Chromium nitride, titanium nitride, and titanium chromium nitride. So this is your title for the coating. This uh, uh, this title or this paper will be presented by Dr. Moi, and uh, this is a part of series for the presentation MME 6.34 presentation assessment. So after going through the title slide, now I'm going to move to the process. So uh, first we need to know what is physical vapor deposition process and how the process takes place. I'm going to tell you about the mechanism by which physical vapor deposition takes place. So in physical vapor deposition, we have got the substrate. The substrate is a material onto which the coating is deposited. We have got evaporant material or target material, which is, this is the material that we need to deposit. And then we have got a heat source uh, by which uh, we can eject the electrons, we can eject the atoms. So in this case, in physical vapor deposition, if the laser source is the heat source, then the laser source the, or the laser beam strikes the target material or irreverent material and that vaporizes the material and under vacuum condition that vapor basically moves towards uh, substrate because of the bias voltage which is applied between the substrate and the target material. So this is uh, introduction to the process of physical vapor deposition. By physical vapor deposition we can basically create very thin and very uh, very uh, smooth uh, surface coatings Moreover, we can create multiple layers of surface coating such as titanium plus titanium nitride or chromium plus chromium nitride, something like that. So this is all about the brief overview of physical vapor deposition process. Next, I'm going to move to coating parameters. These coating parameters were taken from the experimental details of the papers which were written. So for coating parameters, uh, magnetron sputtering was used, which was having a 600 watt radio frequency and a 1200 volt DC generator. It had 12 4 inch and 12 inch electrodes which were placed 15 centimeter away. Uh, in this paper, for controlling the coating parameters of physical vapor deposition, we've got three main parameters. Number one is the DC power. DC power was varied from 200 to 500 watt. Then we've got the temperature of the substrate that was varied from 150 to 300 watt. And then we've got the nitrogen gas flow rate with the help of nitrogen gas fluoride, we can make a reaction between titanium and nitrogen to create titanium nitride. So by varying the coating parameters, we can enhance or we can change the properties of the coating which is deposited on the al 7075 t 6 aluminum substrate. So the coating material used in this paper are three types. Number one is titanium, titanium nitride. Number two is chromium, chromium nitride. Number three is titanium uh, chromium uh, slash titanium chromium nitride. Uh, for uh, titanium titanium nitride, the uh, nitrogen ratio was kept about 30%. And uh, yeah, so this is uh, this is something uh, wrong material which I've added. Sorry for that. So this is all about coating materials and coating parameters. Next, we are going to move on to surface characterization how we are going to characterize, how we are going to analyze the surface. So the surface can be analyzed by the coating buffer, by the help of different types of machine. Number one is scanning electron microscopy. So a scanning electron microscopy looks like this. And uh, it is basically a microscopic technique by which we can measure or we can observe the topographical features. The depth information can be obtained with the help of scanning electron microscopy for the coating. 
Next, we have got focus ion beam milling technique. So in focus ion beam milling technique, I can see the cross section of the coating, how the coating thickness information can be seen and how it looks, how is the adhesion, how is the interface between the coating and the substrate. So what we can see is that there is no crack in between two interfaces between aluminum chromium and chromium chromium nitride. The thickness of the chromium nitride layer is found to be 2.04 micrometer uh, followed by 1.28 micrometer for uh, chromium. Next, uh, we can see atomic force microscopy. So atomic force microscopy is basically used to see the further in-depth topographical features. Uh, this figure, uh, part A, is of the aluminum substrate before wear and after we carry out the friction and wear testing. Uh, a lot of wear tracks are produced in the form of mountains, ridges, peaks and valleys. So here we've got peaks and this part is called the valleys. So these mount uh, ridges uh, basically show us how much the wear and how much the friction was uh, carried out during the wearing process. So at atomic force microscopy is used to see the uh, surface microstructure, micro mor morphological features at an atomic or at a very nano scale. Next, we move on to Eligona three-dimensional scanning system. So Eligona three-dimensional scanning system was used to see the overall uh, overall structure of the surface after the wear process had carried out. So this is uh, information about 3D Eligona. Then we've got adhesion strength. Adhesion strength is basically used to see how the coating sticks to the surface. So the strength of the coating by which it sticks to the surface is something very important and that is adhesion strength of the coating and that can be measured as well and then dry sliding friction and wear tests were carried out so these are the dry sliding friction and wear test in which we can see that the friction coefficient is changing with respect to the time duration of during the test and then we can see that the load increases as the load increases the friction coefficient increases so this is in general how surface characterization was carried out and all of this information was extracted from the paper. So let's talk about surface roughness. So surface roughness and surface te texture. This is the first result that I will be discussing. So here we can see that we have got the substrate material aluminum. On this aluminum, I did titanium nitride coating. I did chromium nitride coating and I did titanium chromium nitride coating. And what I can see is that the least surface roughness after the wear process was found to be for titanium nitride coating, which means that titanium nitride coating gives and produces very good surface roughness even after we do the wear or wear testing process. Here we can see that for uh, titanium nitride coating, uh, the amount of wear or amount of uh, what you call uh, roughness which is produced on the coating is also quite minimum. Whereas we can see that for titanium chromium nitride and chromium nitride, the depth of the coating uh, which is worn out the depth is quite large so this signifies that titanium nitride had superior properties in uh, as compared to chromium nitride and titanium chromium nitride next we move on to adhesion strength so when we see adhesion strength then we can see that we've got a uh, my optical microscopic uh, picture on this optical microscopic picture the intenter scratch the material very hardly and as the intenter as the intenter moves, okay, it removes the coating material. So the point where the coating material is uh, start, starts to remove, the point where we can see the substrate material is the failure point, and that failure point corresponds to a depth of two twenty thousand nanometer, which is equals to I think uh, two micrometer, and the failure point is equals to one thousand uh, millinewton. So this is all about adhesion strength of the coating. Next, we move on to the tribology friction and wear. So here we can see that uh, we've got the friction and wear, friction coefficient of all three coatings. And we can see that the highest friction uh, coefficient was registered at a load of 20 Newton for the coating titanium chromium titanium nitride. This is followed by the middle one. The middle one is the uh, diamond box which is for aluminum substrate and then followed by chromium nitride and titanium chromium nitride. If you look at the friction coefficient also, we can see that for aluminum substrate material it is very very jittery because the substrate material is very soft and it cannot uh, take the hard wear resistant process which occurs. And last but not least we can see that for 
titanium nitride for low loads we can see that the friction coefficient is quite less but if the load increases to 15 and 20 then the friction coefficient increases tremendously uh, the same is uh, true for uh, chromium nitride and titanium chromium nitride as well it means that these coatings are good until 10 newton only and when the load increases to 15 and 20 newton then the uh, what we call then the performance or or then the friction performance of the coating significantly reduces so as per conclusion uh, based on what we can see in this paper uh, what we can see is that uh, that when we do the coating, uh, when we do the coating process, then chromium nitride increases the surface hardness to about five times. Titanium, titanium nitride exhibits the highest resistance to scratch, whereas the titanium, titanium chromium nitride resulted in improving the wear resistance of the coating. Uh, another thing is that when we talk about the surface roughness of the coating, okay, then and we can see that different coatings have different results. For instance, uh, titanium, titanium nitride improve the roughness, increase the roughness to about eight and 5.4 times, whereas chromium, chromium nitride reduce the wear by 1.8 times. So it's all about it's about wear. It's not about roughness. So this is all about uh, this is all about uh, the conclusion for the paper, in which we enhance the properties of aluminium 7075 by depositing different types of coatings. So this is the end of the slide. So I just gave a mock presentation to you guys, okay, uh, about one paper. Uh, you just need to extract some data. You have to give three properties, property number one, property number two, and property number three. You need to show that how characterization is carried out from the paper, and you have to give some details about the coating parameters and the material which is used. Sometimes uh, in some paper, there is no coating. It's only surface modification in which we use lasers to drill holes. Uh, we use lasers to basically uh, create some changes in the surface morph morphology. So this is not uh, coating. That is a part of surface modification. So here you will write surface modification. So that's something like that. So this is all about uh, presentation that you guys have to deliver. Uh, on. Uh, on a specific date. So any question, guys? Ah, so far, so it's so okay. 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 Uh, uh, you yeah, just one thing regarding the, the paper you asked us to pick by ourselves. Is that possible for you? just appoint any paper for all of us and then uh, if we have a problem to understand the journal and then we come back to you is that okay it's much easier thing uh i cannot pick for you guys because everybody has their own taste yeah. so so you guys can pick and even i give you the liberty to download a paper something similar also ah, okay okay understood okay something similar paper also i am i'm okay with that uh, provided that that paper is related to coating or surface modification and provided that it has got surface roughness, uh, friction and wear and uh, adhesion or hardness, something like that. So provided that any paper has these four properties and it has got coating or surface modification, then you guys can present no problem. Uh, but everybody has their own taste. So I give the freedom and liberty that you choose. You can choose any paper you like and choose your uh topic something like that yeah something oh. which you're comfortable comfortable with okay okay but we can we still can choose from the journal you give right correct correct, correct. Mm. okay doctor that, that's clear for me so uh doctor i have one question uh when when we will going to pick up the paper and when we will going to submit uh to you the, the i mean uh the, the result of the paper yes yes so uh my proposal is that uh, maybe 8 or 9 january so uh if i go to january then first january is the uh test number two right Yes, 1st yes. January. 
Saturday. Saturday. So you guys can choose uh, se- uh, any day after the test, maybe. So maybe 7, 8, 9, 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, something like that. So you guys can choose or you want me to choose. Oh, okay so yeah. is that necessary for us to let you know every paper that we uh, yeah. chosen no 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 it's up to you but but if you want to be sure better show me so that uh, at least i know that the correct paper was chosen if you choose something from yourself then let better show me if you choose from the list then okay no problem but if you choose yourself then just show me to confirm so that maybe you don't pick the wrong paper or something like that. Okay, understood, doctor. Yeah, so so you guys can decide any date. And how about on 1st January, what time do you want to give the test? Uh, for me, I prefer uh, in the morning. Okay, so later on, maybe in the group, let me know. Per January time and then the presentation date and time both. So first January time and the presentation date and time. Not that often. Uh, I I have one question. Uh, let's say if I and uh, Irman choose a uh, a same paper. Yes. So is that possible? So in that case, one of one of you have to sacrifice. <laughs> Sacrifice and then <laughs> give your, give your friend uh, the easy paper and <laughs> and uh, maybe you can choose another paper. Uh, then we will uh, we will choose among us first, uh, doctor. Then we will let you know in the group. That's, correct, correct. I guess that's his bad. That's his a good way. Yeah. But, but it doesn't matter whether it is easy or whether, whether it is hard. The presentation is only for you to, for me to see uh, these things, right? These these are the things, uh, where is the Excel sheet? Yeah, so I just, I will be only looking at these things, okay? For the presentation, which I have already created, these uh, six things. So it doesn't matter which paper you choose, but, but my recommendation is also that choose something which you can understand easily okay. choose something uh, which you can understand easily if if somebody else has selected an easier something like you think that was more easy then you can choose the same topic same title you can search on google scholar and you can download the paper and you can present also same topic no problem but different paper that is more important topic can be same the process can be same uh, the properties can be same but different paper Doctor, I guess uh, for the turn, uh, it would be better if you choose. I mean, like, uh, who's the first, who's the second, who's the third. That one is up to you. Uh, on the presentation day, I can choose first, second, third, or uh, regarding paper you want to, do you want me to choose regarding paper? Nah, the turn. The, the turn to present. <laughs> Random, yeah. So turn, I will, I will choose randomly. Okay. Ah, you choose uh, No problem for us. I guess uh, one Carol Nizam will score. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> How is your any flooding in your area? Are you guys okay? Now, Madam Jody. Now recovering, doctor. Now recovery. So you uh, had some flooding issue in your home? Last week, uh, about uh, the flood entered my my kitchen area, but my main entrance, uh, my main entrance, uh, main entrance road to my to my factory uh, flooded uh, about three oh. three feet, about three feet. Oh, so your kitchen, how much water come inside your kitchen? Uh, not much, uh. just just Not I mean like uh, I mean like uh, about uh, about uh, three feet from the door. That's all. Oh, three feet from the door. Okay, so lucky, uh, very lucky. Yeah, yeah very because very I I instruct my 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 JCB driver and my heavy vehicle driver uh, to I mean like to clear all the 
all the uh, drainage system at the back of the our our our, our quarters. Uh. So I, I can save my 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 uh, refrigerators and other other <laughs> other, other 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 equipment. Uh. You you don't have a second story, right? No nope. second story. No okay. So uh, yeah, I think uh, maybe flooding will. The frequency flooding is increasing all over the world. So maybe uh, starting now, maybe we all should think how we can prevent the water from coming inside home. Maybe maybe we can put some obstacles or put some sandbags. I don't know. Uh, maybe we can we can try to find some solution. Hopefully. How about you, Lata? Your area? My area. A lot of people. Not my my home. Uh, but a lot of people in Pekan, Pekan city, many people affected. Man. Yeah, because the water from the Tamalo and Mantaka, uh, yeah, it goes to uh, the sea. Yeah? It goes to the sea because the sea ends at Pekan. Our river, yeah. But for us, the flood was due to rain, not due to river. The flood occurred due to rain in Pekan. In, in Pekan, starting from Kwantan, uh, until the can due to rain also plus river also both yeah 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 and the, the rain water then fall yeah. quite high yeah in our uh, faculty five or six people in our university maybe more than 100 people at least all the cars were damaged and uh, a lot of homes uh, in very bad condition actually so yeah, yeah too much too much destruction actually this is uh, unfortunate yeah okay guys so yeah so i will see you guys then uh, on first of january happy holidays and uh, good luck and take care of your family okay. thank you uh, uh the 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 sorry Rata. the exam will going to be in the morning uh, yeah, doctor. I think we just go in the morning to come okay. to for the Nizam as well. Maybe okay. if we can start eight o'clock something. Okay. okay. Nine, please. Nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nine o'clock. Whatever. It is too early. Actually, it is. Early. I choose for nine. Nine, yeah, nine. Nine is better. Yeah. Okay, we go for it. Nine o'clock in the morning, first of January, Saturday. Okay. Good. We're going to Pagana Roti Chanai first. Ah, okay, okay. Keep <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. See you. Okay, doctor, thank you very much. Okay, doctor, thank you very much. Okay, goodbye. Okay.